Now at 6 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, residents addressed their grievances with Shamrock Products LLC following the chemical spill at the Port of Victoria. And a homeless man dies trying to survive the low temperatures. Plus, police in Ganado need the public's help in finding a stolen vehicle. We have a freeze warning in effect for several counties in the crossroads. We'll have a complete update in weather. Plus, we are just under 24 hours away from kickoff between Houston and Baltimore. I'll have that in sports. You're watching 25 News Now at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Karina Garcia. Don Brubaker has the night off. A local man had his probation revoked and now he's headed to prison for 10 years. He was on probation in May of 2022 for evading arrest cases. 34 year old Chase Ashton Jimenez originally received a 10 year probation sentence in April of 2022. However, he violated the terms of probation in August 2023. That's when he was arrested on a child endangerment charge and under the influence of an unknown substance. He was in a vehicle in the parking lot of the Victoria Mall along with a young child and 100 degree heat. Residents in Victoria complained of a foul odor, which Shamrock Products LLC claimed responsibility for. But many residents are now upset with the lack of communication and transparency surrounding the chemical spill. Lawyers have now filed a lawsuit against Shamrock. There's now a legal development related to the Port of Victoria incident. Attorneys from the law firm Cole, Cole, Easley and Skiba have filed a lawsuit against Shamrock Products LLC on behalf of residents of Victoria County. This stems from an oil spill that occurred at the Shamrock Products facility on January 3rd. The lawsuit states that Shamrock's negligence played a significant role in the oil spill and accuses the company of failing to contain toxic odorous chemicals, allowing them to enter the atmosphere. We have clients that have had to move out of their houses uh, because the smell is so bad, uh, probably going to end up having to have their homes treated. Uh, on January 4th at approximately 5 p.m., an incident at Shamrock Products LLC, a private terminal at the Port of Victoria, resulted in the accidental release of a crude oil and diesel mixture with elevated sulfur content. The Port of Victoria confirmed that around 300 barrels of substance were released, but assured the public it occurred within a designated area. What's even more concerning is that the Victoria Office of Emergency Management says they only received critical information regarding the incident later that evening through an anonymous call. The incident caused a distinct odor, first reported in the southwest region of Victoria County. But the weather patterns that night carried the smell down the coastal bin region, reaching as far as Corpus Christi. All of a sudden, there was this horrendous odor. And um, then after that, shortly after that, like moments after that, my eyes began to burn. Uh, I felt sort of nauseated. My head was pounding. But to me, it was more like a petroleum smell, mm. a heavy petroleum smell. Okay. The lawsuit goes on to say that Shamrock Products neglected to maintain equipment designed to contain these chemicals, failed to properly clean up the area, and violated emission standards set by the... 25 News Now has reached out to Shamrock Products for a statement, and we are currently waiting to hear back. Police in Ganado are searching to find the owner of a truck and they need your help. 25 News Now weekend anchor Adam Seibel joins us now with the latest. Adam. That's right, Karina. The Ganado police are searching for the owner of the truck involved in multiple burglaries. This photo right here shows what who they're searching for, but the vehicle is a Dodge Ram 2500 with a rack, black toolbox and brush guard with lettering on the driver's side door. Again, police say the owner of this vehicle is a suspect in multiple burglaries. Those crimes all took place over the past few weeks. If you have any information, call this number right here on your screen, 361-771-2800. And of course, callers can remain anonymous. Karina, back to you. Adam, thank you. 
Early voting for the City of Victoria Mayor runs through January 30th. Early voting is at the Dr. Patty Dotson Public Health Center 2805 North Navarro Classroom A. You can vote next Monday through Friday and on Monday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Tuesday, January 29th and 30th. You can vote from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. On the ballot is Josephine Solis, Peter Brown, Robert Bob Constantine, Jacob Sauceda, Carissa Winters, and Duane Crocker. Join us Saturday, February 3rd for complete coverage of this special mayor election. In DeWitt County, Judge Daryl Fowler appointed Ryan Vieira to serve as county commissioner in Precinct 1. The term ends at the end of December. Commissioner Curtis Alfback announced last November he would retire early from the position. Three candidates are on the March 5th ballot for that seat. A fair runoff is necessary. It will take place May 28th. The winner will run in the November election. And with that, let's take a look at your forecast with meteorologist Scott Pitney. Thank you, Karina. We have got a couple of weather headlines. We're looking at a freeze warning for several counties in the crossroads starting uh, tomorrow morning at 1 a.m. through tomorrow morning at 9. Then we have a possible alert day for Monday with the anticipation of heavy rain coming next week. We've got those counties that are southwest in the blue shaded area, including Victoria County. But I think everyone north of the 59 corridor is going to see temperatures in the upper 20s south near freezing except right along the coast. We'll have a complete update coming up in your forecast. Karina, back to you. Scott, thank you. A homeless man in Kansas City dies trying to survive the low temperatures this week. The community is doing everything they can so that this may not happen again. It's like losing a family member. Yeah, it's like losing someone you love. For Andre Murray, a volunteer at Hope Faith, losing a good friend he knows from the streets is tough. We are family. You know, everybody has their disagreements and things like that, but we are family. We love each other. And we look out for each other, we pray for each other, but it's sad. Murray lost his friend Tuesday afternoon after he was found dead on 8th and Tracy by a guest of Hope Faith. Murray and folks at Hope Faith say this man was a member of the homeless community who had been trying to survive the winter like these folks inside. Being out there with no gloves just for a couple of minutes, your hands get cold, I mean, hands get numb, you get frostbites. A lot of people not adequately prepared for it before the winter hit. One life is too many lives. Doug Langner with Hope Faith says their doors are open, but getting folks into the shelter isn't always easy. We have to be honest. There are a few people in our community that make a choice that they're going to solve their own issue in their own way, and um, many times they do. But Barbie Miller with Hope Faith says as a low barrier shelter, they are accepting people as they are. When they are checking their bags in, we just ask that they don't bring anything into the building, like, you know, contraband, drugs, alcohol, weapons, things like that. Like, they can't come in the building, but they can check them in, and then they can get their things back the next morning. Volunteering inside Hope Faith, Murray says during cold days like this, he tries to offer hope to other friends on the street. Life is a journey. You're going to go through some struggles. You're going to go through some things like this. Stay hopeful. Stay positive. It'll get better. It just takes time. In Kansas City, Leslie Dallas Board, KSHB 41 News. Back in Victoria, two warming centers are reopening today starting at 5 p.m. Our Lady of Sorrows Trinity Hall, located at 204 West River Street, will be open until 8 a.m. Saturday. Everyone is welcome. The Salvation Army of Victoria headquarters, located at 13 or 2 North Lewis Street, opens as a warming center anytime the temperature drops below 35 degrees or below 30 degrees in wind chill. Adult males are allowed overnight, but the day center is open to all. The fentanyl crisis is sweeping the nation, and North Texas is no exception. Just this month, a fentanyl drug dealer that used Instagram to lure teens was sentenced in Fort Worth. A Dallas high school hosted an information session on the deadly drug just last night. Educators and administrators all attended the meeting. Fatalities when it comes to fentanyl are young kids. 12 to 24 year olds. So from an educator's perspective, you know, they sometimes see changes in behavior in their students, sometimes even before parents might. In Dallas, three people were sentenced to federal prison for their roles in a drug ring that cost three teenagers their lives. 
Migrant apprehensions on the U.S. southern border have increased to around 4,000 a day. This week's numbers mark an increase from earlier this month, where it was around roughly 3,000 apprehensions per day. It's still far less than the 10,000 daily migrant encounters observed last month. However, multiple sources say migration changes could increase at any time. Now, state authorities arrested 10 migrants this morning in the Shelby Park area of Eagle Pass. This area is near the U.S.-Mexico border and had been taken over by the state of Texas just last week. Video shows the migrants on top of cargo container barriers installed on the banks of the Rio Grande. Migrant arrests in the area began on Wednesday. Families and children are being handed over to U.S. Border Patrol. But single adult migrants are arrested and charged with criminal trespassing before they are handed over to the U.S. Border Patrol. Our local blood bank really needs your help right now, so here is your viewer poll this evening. You can scan that QR code on your screen to vote. The question is, what factors have prevented you from donating blood? Is it lack of awareness, fear or discomfort, time constraints or health restrictions? According to our results, it looks like the highest one stands at 73% with health restrictions. Thank you for voting. We want to hear from you. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to take part and we're going to have an update on 25 news now at six. Keep Victoria Beautiful is hosting their Silver City neighborhood cleanup on Saturday, February 24th from 9 to 11 a.m. Volunteers, volunteers will work in teams to help residents move large items and tree limbs to curbs so that they can be picked up. Breakfast and coffee will be provided for all those who attend and hot dogs will be present as well. It starts at Mount Calvary Baptist Church on 3101 Cali Street. To sign up, visit keepvictoriabeautiful.org. Now remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click that notification bell. For now, stay with us. Gas prices in Texas remain flat despite tensions in the Middle East. That's coming up on 25 News Now at 6. Also ahead, authorities in California searching for a suspect of a high-speed chase. Here's a look at what you can expect on Community Crossroads this weekend. We hear about the Heart Walk. We also learn about how to deal with arthritis and joint pain and also how to deal with cold pain, especially for some of our older viewers. Uh, folks have space heaters in their homes mm -hmm. um, and that can be um, really cozy but also a really huge fire risk.
Officers are searching for a driver who led them on a high speed chase in Los Angeles today. Authorities say the chase began after a report of a stolen vehicle. The driver managed to squeeze through alleyways and between traffic in an industrial business area before crashing into a parked vehicle and jumping out of the truck. Officers chased the driver after he fled from the truck on foot, though it's not immediately clear whether the driver was armed with a weapon. More details surrounding the incident are currently developing. Despite flaring tensions and disrupted trade routes in the Middle East and a historic winter weather, here at home gas prices in the U.S. continue to hold steady, at least for now. Historic cold and deadly winter weather taking a toll on oil production in the U.S. There can be unexpected outages caused by the freezing temperatures. There can be power losses. Pipelines that deliver natural gas to refineries can freeze. And so we have seen uh, several major refineries in Texas shut down because of the extremely cold weather. In the Middle East, critical shipping lanes disrupted by attacks on vessels by Iran-backed Houthi militants from Yemen in retaliation, they say, for the war in Gaza. And what's happening in the Red Sea with the Houthi militants has driven up oil prices as many vessels have been avoiding the Red Sea. That's driving up transit time. Yet despite these cascading crises, gas prices across America are holding relatively steady in the low $3 range for a gallon, according to AAA. It stands at $3.09 a gallon. That price uh, still uh, considerably lower, about 29 cents lower than what we were paying last year. Gas buddies Patrick DeHaan says overall global demand for oil is down and a dramatic shift to above average temperatures in the U.S. next week could counter any impact of recent refinery shutdowns, keeping prices steady. But some pain at the pump may be in the forecast as winter starts to loosen its grip next month. The national average will begin its seasonal rise and escalating tensions overseas may finally hit wallets here at home. If oil production eventually is impacted, then these geopolitical tensions certainly could be more impactful in the weeks and months ahead. More signs that the bitter cold continues to cause problems in North Texas. This is what it looked like when a water pipe burst near Dallas. The fire department arrived moments after to help shut off the water. That left a mess in a parking garage. No word if any homes were damaged. We have a possible alert day for Monday with the possibility of heavy rain. We'll talk about the details coming up in your forecast. And welcome back. So we've got two events. We've got the freeze tonight, although it's not going to be anything like it was Monday, upper 20s, right around freezing. But then we have heavy rain. So we've got a possible alert day for Monday. We're expecting rain starting Sunday into Monday. We could get two to three inches just for those two days. And then we have additional amounts possible for Tuesday, Wednesday, all the way through Thursday. And this is for the entire crossroads. Let's take a look at the future rain totals here. We're seeing anywhere from five inches up there in Hallettsville and Yoakum all the way to an inch or a half an inch. Keep in mind, this is a model range, so anybody in the crossroad can get these amounts. But generally, overall, we're expecting expecting pretty heavy rain, two to three inches plus and possible another two inches coming up for the rest of the week. Here's where we're looking at future tracker. We've got high pressures, so we still have that northerly wind and cold temperatures, but that high is going to move off to the east. We're going to see a return of easterly and southerly flow, bringing the moisture back in. The first round of rain, we've got a mid-level trough that's going to be coming from a southwest west to northeast direction. That's going to bring our first 
um, batch of rain for Monday. And then as we get closer to Tuesday and Wednesday, you see this front approaching Texas. Well, that's going to be bringing the rain for Tuesday and Wednesday, giving us a chance for that additional two to three inch amount. And then by Thursday, that front clears out, but we still have rain chances for Thursday and Friday. So the models are still a little uncertain as far as the timing and how fast that front is actually going to push through. Taking a look at future track, we see the clouds starting to move in on Saturday. And then by Sunday, you see that disturbance starting to move in. This is 12 o'clock noon on Sunday. We see that disturbance starting to move in. Then by the time we get to 6 p.m., even 10 p.m., pretty much the entire crossroads with widespread rain. Temperatures right now in the mid 40s. We saw 50s earlier today. We still see 50s along the coast. Taking a look at future temperatures, I'm going to stop it here. On five, at 5 a.m., notice the freeze, freezing temperatures right along the 59 corridor as you get closer to the coast and maybe even on the coast. Maybe those temperatures stay slightly above freezing, but definitely freezing and just below freezing upper 20s north of the 59 corridor. And then as we get to the afternoon on Saturday, those temperatures staying pretty cool in the upper 40s for Saturday afternoon. But then by Sunday, notice the freezing temperatures are gone and they will stay gone for a few days as we get into a warmer pattern. Marine forecast, it's very windy out there. I put this up here to show if you are heading out offshore since it is the weekend, you're going to be looking at some pretty breezy conditions with that east wind and southeast wind at 25 miles per hour all the way through Sunday. So those winds just aren't going to die down at all. They will change direction. Marine forecast for Port Aransas, there is a gale warning in effect. You see the high and low tide there. Winds north at 25 knots with gusts to 35. Those bay waters rough. Waking up to 35, 35 Port Lavaca, 9 a.m. Could be freezing closer to sunrise. 33 Victoria. It will be freezing likely in Victoria around 30 at sunrise. And then 32, a little bit cooler in Cuero. Everybody with mostly sunny skies turning cloudy toward the afternoon. 50% chance of rain on Sunday. That's mainly in the afternoon. Possible alert day Monday, 80% chance. That's where we get the two to three inches. And then another one to two inches possible for Tuesday and Wednesday. But notice those high temperatures. Very nice, kind of balmy actually, because there's going to be a lot of moisture in the air. Around 70 degrees. Lows pretty mild as well. Around 50s, even the upper 60 or upper 50s, close to 60. And then still a chance of rain for Thursday and Friday toward the end of the week. Of course, you can download the Crossroads Today app, get the latest in news, weather, and sports at your fingertips, sign up for email alerts, and it's free. Karina, back to you. Thanks, Scott. And now here's Zach Brown with your sports. The Houston Astros have signed Josh Hader. I'll have that in sports.
And Josh Hader, the deal is for five years, $95 million, which ESPN reporter Jeff Passan says is the largest value for a relief pitcher in history. The 29-year-old is a five-time All-Star, having made it each of the last three years, three-time All-MLB first team, including this past season, and is also a three-time reliever of the year, winning it in 2018, 19, and 2021. He will join Ryan Presley and Brian Abreu and that back end of the bullpen will be one of, if not the best one, two, and three punches in all of baseball. It's the NFL divisional round of playoffs, and you expected Dallas to be playing this weekend. Then after the loss, you thought maybe Mike McCarthy was out of there. Then they surprised many, including myself, by deciding to keep him. But here's what he had to say to those loyal Dallas Cowboy fans. Unbelievable fan base, uh, and, they have, and they should be frustrated. Um, uh, we're extremely disappointed, uh, disappointed for them, uh, disappointed in our performance. Uh, but my, my message would be this. Uh, we, we, we have established a, a, you know, a championship program. It's just not the world championship yet. Uh, we know how to win. Uh, we know how to train to win. We have the, we have the right people. Um, but we have not crossed the threshold winning playoff games. Dallas seems content with just running it back, just looking for that postseason success like Coach McCarthy just talked about. And that's going to lead us to your viewer poll. Do you think the Dallas Cowboys made the right decision by bringing back Mike McCarthy, yes or no? We've got about 68% of you with yes, 32 with no. I thought it was going to be 100% no, to be honest with you. But, I mean, the definition of insanity, doing the same thing again, and they're going to have the same result just like this year. And speaking of the Texans, who the Cowboys do play next year, that game tomorrow right here on KAVU at 3.30 p.m. They're in Baltimore, the Ravens already without Marlon Humphrey, but word had it Mark Andrews could have been activated. Now it's being reported that Andrews likely won't be on the active roster for tomorrow's game. Houston will be without Noah Brown. Baltimore heavily favored in this one, but the last time Baltimore was favored by this amount in the playoffs, they lost to the Titans. It is Hoops Friday with a dash of success. Some huge games in the area. We'll take you to Hallettsville with a 23rd ranked Lady Brain was welcome the Edna Cowgirls, who were ranked, lost one game and fell out, but they are still undefeated in district. Edna, one game up on Hallettsville, big one right there. Then right after that, when the boys hit the hardwood, tip off for that one at 7:30. Edna, 4-1 in district play, Hallettsville, 4-2. So this one also huge for the standings as well. The Quarrel ladies playing later, try to stay undefeated. And how about a star from Quarrel, Jordan Whittington, who had a young bull named after him by a Texas fan. The baby bull is named Witt. Jordan seemed to love it, saying, I do have a junior on this earth. And one more bit of Quarrel news. Former gobbler Savion Patton, who is one of the best linemen in the, well, formerly XFL, he's now going up the road to San Antonio, getting drafted by the San Antonio Bramas in the newly formed UFL. Patton has gotten a few NFL looks. His grind continues just two hours away. That team, by the way, coached by Wade Phillips. That's it for your sports. Karina, back to you. Thanks, Zach. We're going to be back in a moment. Could you stay off your phone for a month? You could win 10K. The details this evening.
How long can you go phone free? One company is willing to pay people $10,000 to do their digital detox, no phone at all, for an entire month. Siggy's Dairy, which makes yogurt, says it's nice to live a simpler life with less distractions. And as we all know, many of those distractions do come from our phones. In addition to the cash, other prices available include three months worth of yogurt, a one month prepaid SIM card, and appropriately enough, a smartphone lock box. Do you think you could survive without your phone for a month? Be I just, honest. I had the same question for you. Survive, yes, I can always survive. Thrive, no. <laughs> I could survive, I, I'll, I'll manage, you know, I'll yeah. manage, but I don't know, everything's on my phone. Everything. It's crazy. Well, GPS, our jobs, our jobs yeah. GPS. Yeah. How do I call my mom? Yeah. All these crazy things. Like I said, survive. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and if you're stuck in bad weather, a phone could also come in handy. Good point. Yeah. Speaking of weather, <laughs> we've got we've got some weather. A couple of headlines. We've got a freeze tonight. Freeze warning for some counties. I think we'll see freezing temperatures. Uh, just about everywhere in the crossroads and heavy rain possible alert day on Monday two to three inches Sunday and Monday additional one to two inches for the rest of the week. We are going to get some rain so grab your umbrella and recommend don't wash in your car yet. Alrighty you know what I take it back I will do it for 10k I think I'll do it for 10k. Oh okay we're back to the phone. Yeah we're back to the phone. All right I thought about let me it. know how it works out. Oh I'm, I'm not gonna sign up but I, I would do it. And lunch after that? Oh absolutely. Since, since Dinner for everybody. Okay. For oh, everybody. Well yeah. okay we'll support you. We're, we're all behind you. <laughs> all right thank you Scott <laughs> and thank you for joining us. We hope to see you back here tonight for 25 News Now at 10.